What's up YouTube, it's Fitzbro and this is my beginner's tutorial for Dune Spice Wars. If you've been watching this game on Twitch or you've just been thinking about buying it, you probably have looked at this window and thought, wow, there are a lot of icons, there's a lot of resources, there's a ton of mechanics and win conditions to this game. And have no fear, I'm here to break those down for you and I will leave beautiful timestamps down below in the description, so feel free to hop around as you need to, but think of this as a resource for you if you're trying to figure out what the heck does everything do in this game and I will explain it bit by bit and of course I'm still learning as we go so if I miss something leave a comment down below and uh, let's get into this so when you spawn into the game now this is a game that's been going on for a while so I had an example of some things but here is your basic resources they are displayed across the top and then there's some other resources that are here on the side panels and let's explain what all of these are for you Okay, so this first gold looking one, it looks like gold, smells like gold, it might be gold. We call it Solari here in the game of Dune, but this is your money to buy things. Now, you can hover over any of the stuff and it will show you what's giving you Solari, how are you, why are you losing Solari. Um, in general, I will say the tooltips are going to be your friend, so just hover over it. It might explain what it does. So this is your gold. Um, you get your gold by either producing it in a district. Uh, at your uh, or in, in one of your villages so you can see here I've got a town you can see the gold icon maybe it gives you gold yes it gives me 30 gold per month why does it well if you hover over here it'll show you um, I've built a processing plant here so that's a special building you can get I'm not gonna talk about every building in this tutorial but just know uh, your villages they can generate some different resources you can hover over their tooltips which will show you um, but yes, you can get your gold by generating it, you can trade for it, um, or you can uh, exchange it at the market. So you can see here I can move this slider. So this will trade my spice for gold. You can see the exchange rate. One spice is worth 2.3 gold this month. It'll change, right? That's hilarious. It's going to change next month. You can read this nice little report. Don't feel like you have to really check this report out. I often don't even read it. I just kind of adjust this. If I need gold, I'm going to do more gold. If I need spice, I'm going to leave it this way. Okay. So since we're talking about spice, we're here. This is the reason for the season. Spice Wars, we have spice. You get your spice out on the map. You can see these purple looking uh, villages out here. This is where I'm gathering spice and it increases your stockpile of spice. Um, this is what makes your gold go around. So Early on, prioritize getting your spice. Defend your spice. Don't lose this uh, because then you're going to very quickly starve. You run out of gold, you run out of spice, you'll get some negative multipliers, especially as you miss your taxes. In here, you'll see... Uh, if I hover over this, in 18 days, my taxes will be due. I have to pay 478 spice. Luckily, I have enough in the stockpile. But if you miss that, you will get a negative multiplier. Um, but you want to make your tax payments every month. It's called a bribe for some of the other factions. Um, and making your payments, make sure you has a, have a good lance red standing. We'll get into that in a second. Um, but uh, yes, that's spice, that's solari, that's gold. Yes, let's keep moving on here. Next, we have plascrete. This is your building block. This is the material you use for uh, developing buildings in your villages. So pretty simple. Uh, I recommend you can build a plascrete factory uh, in any right here in any village, and it only costs four plascrete to upkeep. So I like that because it only costs what it produces to upkeep. Whereas, you know, a wind trap's gonna cost two gold, a listening post is gonna cost five gold and three in uh, plascrete. So, but nice thing about plascrete factory, it generates plascrete and it only costs plascrete for upkeep. Okay, you, I typically have plenty of plascrete to go around. Okay, that's plascrete, AKA plastic. Let's keep going. Next, we have manpower. This is gonna be used, as you can see there, uh, it would be used for your military. Uh, I've got armies, is costing nine of my manpower right now. You can use it, uh, you can gain it through your agents uh, or from different uh, improvements. You're gonna use this when you buy harvesters or you're gonna buy uh, militia here at these villages, right? You're, I bought these militia. They don't have an upkeep cost, but they cost an initial uh, amount of manpower, okay? Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to keep moving on. Next, we have the fuel cell. Now, this is not going to be there for the Fremen, right? They don't use fuel cells. So I, I picked this uh, faction just here to show you. Uh, so the fuel cell, this is going to be used for your refineries and for ornithopters here. Um, fuel cells are the main power source used on Arrakis. They are used to operate vehicles such as harvesters as well as buildings. So there's certain buildings um, and vehicles that are going to cost fuel cells. I generally don't really go low on fuel cells. It seems to be fine. You can see what my income and cost is but uh, that is one of the resources moving on this is another main resource i kind of consider uh your solari your spice and water like your main ingredients yes you need manpower too but you really got to have these uh water okay you produce your water to uh to keep your, your troops hydrated so uh this is going to help support your army your villages your annexation abilities so if i want to take over a new village it's going to cost a certain amount of water and our next one which is authority authority is your reach of your civilization um the the villages that are close by will cost less authority to take you can see like 95 authority but if i go across the map and try and wanted to like annex Jeez, let's see. If I want to annex this, see, it costs 232 authority. So it's going to cost more if it's further away. So that's something for you to know. But that's authority. Um, and last but not least, on this top tab, the Landstrad Standing. Think of the Landstrad like the government of Arrakis, this planet. Uh, this is what they think of you, and you get different benefits from this. Okay, you can see a high standing. I get a bonus spice. I get uh, additional votes, more influence, more hegemony. So there's there's different benefits you get from having high or low land threading. Just know you want it to be high. You don't want it to be low. Uh, you can see I'm kind of middle here right now. They consider it, I guess, this is high. Um, but uh, getting that all the way up to the top is a condition for some of the uh, positions on the council. But yes, those are the, the base uh, resources here at the top. We'll talk a little bit more how to generate those as we get into some of the tabs down here. Okay, now let's go over here to some of our secondary. So I call them secondary resources, but they're all just resources, right? Um, you've got knowledge. More knowledge income will make your research go faster. Okay, so we'll go in these tabs in a second. So knowledge, uh, you can produce this knowledge. Uh, you can see here I've got a base, villages, the suck doctor, I guess, says plus zero. So I guess I don't have that. I don't know what that is. Um, but one way you can really boost this is in your villages, you can build uh, these, uh, where is it? Oh, the research hub. So it gives plus one knowledge, right? You can see that there. So that's why it increases. So if you really want to focus on uh, hammering out some tech, this is a good one for that. Okay, next is your influence. You see, oh boy, look at that, Fitzbro. You're so popular. Look at all the influence you have. 500 plus 12. Speaking of influence, make sure you hit subscribe so we can get more influence here in the Dune Spice Wars community. And leave a comment. Anyways, we got influence. You use this influence to vote on the council, which I will show you in a bit. Um, but you can generate this similar to what I showed you. You can uh, you can build uh, instead of the research hub, you can do the listing post for influence, and you can do the data center for intel. So there's nice little ways you can boost that. But there's also other tax, certain uh, civ bonuses, stuff you can do that will also increase that number. Okay. Now this influence for uh, factions like uh, uh, the Atreides, you get a vote per month, and then you can also uh, subsidize that with additional influence points but then there's factions like the fremen who don't get a whole lot of votes in the lands route they have to spend their influence each month if they want to vote so you see i get 120 votes this is additional influence so think of this like rigging elections okay and then over here we've got an agent i currently have five agents these slowly spawn over time sometimes you capture them sometimes you lose them we'll go through that and then there's intel so this intel is going to be used on operations okay so those are all the resources oh one more we've got hegemony 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 let me know how you say it um but this is kind of like this is a win condition uh so if you hit twenty five thousand, you'll win the game but this also unlocks certain things sometimes this is a it will get a bit of bonus maybe you get more solari or water per your hegemony level or vice versa there's always some kind of bonus out there um and again you can click this tab and you will see uh the different levels of what is unlocked and each faction is going to have a different one of this you actually see this in the first screen when you pick your faction Okay, so you can look at this. If I get 10k hegemony, you can ignore the charters requisites for the lands red standing. So, 
Speaking of Landsrad standings, let's look at this. We're gonna come over here. This is where the voting happens on the Landsrad Council. This happens once a month. Let's look at this. You can see the active resolutions. That means this is what was voted on last month. So currently, uh, and for if the Council Trades uh, tries to use an agent, 100% agent capture with an operation is detected. Okay, so that's a negative thing for me right now. And I also have. Uh, it looks like globally there's a Solari upkeep discount. By the way, speaking of like this de uh, debuff uh, slash penalty is going on, you can always hover over things. You see this red thing? Like, what does that mean? Hover over it. It that just tells me that's what's going on this month. If I miss, if I go negative on any of these or my payments, uh, I miss a payment. You'll see a red thing pop up here, and it'll tell you what's happening. Read that closely because you don't want to have these. But sometimes it's a resolution. Like I can't change this right now. Um, but there's also positive ones you might see that'll pop up here in green. So each month, you vote on the different uh, resolutions on the land strad. So there'll be three of these, and this will open up, and it will let you vote. Uh, I'll speed this up so you can see it here in a little bit. But essentially, if I voted for this one, this will... Uh, Looks like this will elect me to judge of the councils. These are the special charters up here. So you can hover over these. They have special prerequisites and, and unlock special things. Um, the Dune governorship is a win condition. If you hold this position for 60 days, you win the game. So this is one way to go about winning. We're going to hear all kinds of noises as we are speeding up so I can show you what this voting looks like. Um, so some of the resolutions will be global. So globally, everyone decides who's going to win this. So other factions, they might vote against me. I'm going to vote for it. Maybe I want to spend my ridiculous amount of influence and I will win this vote. Um, and then there's some things that will be specifically you'll vote against factions. So um, that's how the council works. We'll come back to that once I unlock it just so you can see it. Let's take a look at the research tab as we go through it. Now, by the way, you see like all these things popping up. Like I mentioned before, just hover over them. It's going to tell you. Go to. Let's go check out what's going on here. It'll take me to it. You can dismiss it. Um, generally read those as you go through, but they're just to help you out as you uh, move through the game. Okay, so developments, aka like our tech tree, our research. You've seen this in many other strategy games. It's not a, a new concept. Now, I'm not going to read through every one of these right now because that's an, uh, its own video, which I will do in the future. Maybe once I decide what I think are the, the most OP tech trees, I'll make you a video for that. Um, now, certain factions have different bonuses. So this isn't going to be the same tech tree for each faction. They are uh, unique, but there's some things that are going to be similar, as you'll notice as you go throughout them. Okay? But essentially up here, this is intelligence related. So these are going to be related to your agents, getting agents, assigning agents, things you can do. There's going to be benefits re uh, relating to diplomacy um, and your espionage. Uh, this is going to be all military, this red tab. This is all military. So these are going to give you more command points, military buttons. Maybe additional units will be unlocked. Maybe it'll give you a military building. That's what you're gonna get there. Up here, these are kind of like your. I think of this as like your city waterworks. This is your like community. So this is gonna be uh, additional authority. This one's gonna give me more knowledge. This will make my explorers faster. So just kind of generic uh, community things here. This one's a little bit. I feel like more variety than these other ones, which are very specific. And then this is your economy based one. So this makes cheaper to get buildings. This gets it. Uh, all these things are going to be just boost your economy and discounts on different items. OK, so those are all the things you can research. And uh, like I mentioned, this will go faster depending on how much knowledge you have. OK, now that I've sped up time a little bit, the next Landsrad Council is open. Let's go in here and you could see I can vote. So let's see over here. I could support the winner of this. Uh, gets free three Landshard guards now out of the gate. I have 120 votes, but I also have additional influence I could spin so I could slide this over and I could really sway this vote and You can see house Harkonnen has 100 votes the smugglers have 10 votes uh, The Fremen gets zero and then you've got the minor houses But of course what you don't see here is you don't know how much influence they have because they could sway these votes with influence Or if they all team up on you, which the AI does often um, it votes against you here I could say, uh, you know, House Harkonnen wants this. I could say, decline that. Nope, I'm going to vote against it. I don't want Harkonnen to get it. Um, or, you know, do I want everyone to have more, uh, you know, a negative water upkeep? We can support it or decline it and, again, add votes to that. So just know you start with a certain amount of votes, and it's different for each factions, and then you have influence to uh, influence the votes. Okay. Politicians could be bought. Okay, that's research. That's the council. Once a month you have to do this. This is going to depend on the tech you pick. The higher up techs research faster. The lower ones take longer. 
And last but not least, our espionage tab. Okay, intel and agents. Let's look at this. Okay, now I'm late game. We have quite a few, or mid game rather. We've got quite a few agents assigned to different things. So let's go through all these. So over time, you can see here in 14 minutes, it will generate a new agent, which will show up here. I can hover over a, that agent. They have their own special traits, um, but I don't find these to like greatly influence what I do with them as of right now. So it looks like uh, knowledge global protection is increased by 1% per infiltration level. Like most of these things, I'm just kind of passively doing. So, But do understand, agents do have their own traits um, as you assign them. You know, There might be a certain way you want to assign them depending on the infiltration level. Uh, but anyways... Agents, you to click the agent and you can assign them either to Arrakis, Spacing Guild, Chome, or Landstrat. Now you can read through each of these, but essentially this is going to give you authority. This is going to give you manpower. This is going to give you Solari slash gold. And this one's going to give you influence. Now, in addition to all those, this column will all generate one intel. That means plus one intel is going to be trickling in. If you assign them over here, they will trickle in plus five intel. So if you want to have a bunch of intel, right, you can see some intel here. If you want to have some intel, uh, you might want to assign them over here. But also, you see how there's levels, level two, level one, etc., etc. You can bounce these guys around as you see fit, right? I can move them at any time. I can move them around. But it's going to change these levels. Well, these levels are needed to unlock different missions over here. So now this is the only thing I noticed does not have really a hover tip. So if I come down here, look at this. If I want to do infiltration cells, right? This is for assassinating an enemy leader. This is a win condition. Uh, I need to have, let's see, two of this I need to have so that. That's the look, look at the symbol that matches up with this, right? I'm trying to infiltrate uh, their their civilization. I'm gonna need level two of spying on Harkonnen, okay? I also need level two of Arrakis. I need level two of Spacing Guild. I need level two. Say so you get the idea. Match up the picture. I'm sure you can do it. So different missions are gonna have different requirements that you're going to need to do that. So you want to bounce your agents around um, as you see fit. I usually start with Arrakis to get to that. Uh, authority coming in so I can annex more uh, villages and then I usually go for uh, either the chome for Solari or I go for manpower here at the spacing guild but you'll want to uh, move these around and manage them sometimes you'll lose agents on your spying missions if the enemy captures them um, but I'm not going to go too much into detail to that so you get your you can research this too so a supply drop right uh, let's see one I've already researched I researched uh, poison the reserves right so I paid it they researched they got it, it took two days okay now that I have poison the reserves I can go to uh, a district here. I left click it, then you activate it, you click on the territory, and look at that. Now they are poisoned now for this duration. Um, so that's how it works, use that, and then usually you want to go back in and buy it again, right? I could buy, there, it'll start buying that back. So you gotta click it and you have to use it um, on the correct spot. So I remember playing my first round and I didn't have a clue how, to, like I thought you just researched these and they just chilled here. I didn't realize like these were things to spend. Um, Okay, and you got different slots that will unlock over time. Look, I need to research intelligence agency to unlock these additional slots. Okay, which is on the tech tree, right? Let's go in here. Uh, intelligence agency um, is it's somewhere in here. Okay, um, but anyways, that is the espionage tab, and uh, yeah, that's all these these tabs. Let's look at the uh, how to talk to the other factions now. If you want to trade with the factions, you can start a conversation. Just click on their beautiful picture in the top. It opens a window and tells you all the things you can trade. Now, we've already covered all these items. You can hover over it. There's the intel, right? Uh, agents, if they get captured, will show up here. But you got some treaties. Some of these start locked, by the way. You have to unlock them. So you've got a research agreement. That'll give me additional Thor knowledge for both people. This will give us both more Solari. This will uh, make it so we don't lose supply in the territory. Now, do know... AI doesn't care if you have a non-aggression pact. They will still attack you. So don't get too excited. I thought this was like a peace treaty. This isn't like a, they can't attack you. Like they will still attack you. Um, and then you can also unlock military pressure, which means you can threat them. And uh, like you can put that in there. I'm going to say military pressure and you're going to give me intelligence. Okay. And in general, I find that the AI will trade with you uh, if this is even up one. So let's, let's throw some resources at him. There we go. So he's going to trade with me if I do this. All right. Um, I was, you know, I'll hit trade 
And I guarantee you he'll accept it. There you go. I'll try it accepted. They might they may uh, decline it, but there you go. So that's how you could trade with the other factions. Of course, multiplayer will be way different uh, when you're not just trading with an AI. Um, and that multiplayer, by the way, is a future thing, not currently in this early access. Um, if we keep heading down, there's a few more things here. We've got our harvesters. These are the harvesters that have been assigned. Uh, when you build your spicing operations, it's going to be different for each faction, like what this looks like. But essentially, you can add additional crew to them. So I did that here. I'm already at the max, but I paid manpower. I added crew. And basically, you can see if they're idle here. You can see I've got an ornithopter idle, etc., etc. So that is how... Uh, these are a harvester tab, ornithopters, these are your explorers. You can double click them and find them. I generally try to make sure I micro these every once in a while. Every time I think I have downtime, I click my ornithopters and say, hey, go go check out these crash shuttles, get me some gold, whatever it might be. And then we have our military. Let's click on our military just so you can see the different troops you can recruit. They've got different costs. You do see one here uh, that says command points. Uh, it's, I can't really hover it over here, but it's actually something we missed up here in our espionage tab. We talked about everything, but we forgot to talk about the counterintelligence. You can assign uh, your agents to the counterintelligence, and that will give you additional command points. You see there, uh, this next one will give me plus two production of command points there. So that's going to support uh, a larger military, and it will tell you it's a 1% daily chance of capturing an enemy agent, 10% chance to capture an agent when an operation against you has been detected, and a 10% chance to detect an operation targeting you. Okay, so you can also balance between this. Sometimes if you really want a big military, it might be in your interest to throw more guys up here to the uh, additional command point bonus. By the way, you can click on the different factions and check out their uh, check out their resources. You can see there. Um, and if I had some agents attached here, it would unlock some more information. Okay. Um, and speaking of military, you can train them there, and then they will show up back at your home base, which you start at uh, here, and they'll pop out. Uh, uh, right in this zone. Unfortunately, they always pop out at your capital, whatever you want to call it. You can't train them on the front line, so you're going to have to move them. Now, speaking of which, once you reach that initial hegemony uh, uh, tier, I think it's 2,000 hegemony, it unlocks the ability to get some research here. Now, some of this is kind of confusing, so I'll explain this the best I can to what I understand, but I'm still learning a little bit about this module. So if you have any further insight, feel free to leave it down below as a comment. But essentially, this looks different by for each faction, by the way. So you've got districts that you can improve here at your capital. So this is a district of one. This has level. This has two. Uh, this is one. This is three. Okay. Now, I did one here. So since I have this was an economic improvement, uh, it gives me the tier one bonus over here, which is twenty percent uh, completion speed. Uh, so you get these different ones. Look, complete a district with two economy buildings. I'll unlock that. Complete a district with three economy buildings. I will unlock this. So you're only going to get one of these tier three, right? So if you want that or you want that or you want that, you got to either put all military or all influence in one district. So you generally want your districts to be specialized, uh, whether it's economy, military, or statecraft. But you can simply click on those. It gives you all your options. Some of these buildings are available right out of the gate. Some of them have to be unlocked through some research. Look, I have to research econ uh, economic lobbying to get this. And these are expensive. Uh, 1,500 Solari and 500 Plascrete. So, uh, and, and there's upkeep involved. So don't forget about that. There's also upkeep. But maybe the, hopefully the benefit is going to outweigh whatever it costs okay but those are the districts and the improvements you know you're going to sparingly get these from time to time but uh obviously they're, they're more expensive to get okay guys well um with that uh we've all oh, i got one more thing i just remembered we didn't talk about these buttons what are these you only see them if you zoom out okay so zoom out these are filters you can apply so i could target my harvesters i could show where the icons on this is my favorite one resource filter you can also hit uh i and it's going to show everything i always just start the game i hit i it shows me my resources you can see there i can see where the spice is what the wind levels are etc etc but yeah different filters you can turn on and off
But with that, guys, that is the entire UI as I've explained it. There you can look at the agents you've decided if you didn't realize that already. Um, but I hope that helps you um, as you are getting started in the game. There aren't any in-game tutorials as far as everything we just explained. There's a few tool tips, but uh, let me know if you've got any questions about anything else in the game, and I will try to clarify it for you down in the comments. So thank you so much for watching my beginner's tutorial for uh, Dune Spice Wars, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for subscribing.